Hello friends, in this video, let us discuss about deep bar double cage induction motor. So, whenever we refer to induction motor, 90 to 95% industries will employ the squirrel cage motors. They will employ the squirrel cage motors and uh, a question arises in our mind why the industries employ this squirrel cage motors only but not why slip ring induction motor. So, 90 to 95% industries will employ these squirrel cage motors because the reasons are very simple. So, one reason is you can say the squirrel cage motors are cheap and they have simple and rug type of construction. They do not require slip rings and brushes. That means the maintenance requirement is very less compared to your slip ring induction motor. So, therefore, mainly we are going for squirrel cage induction motor as a requirement of maintenance less and it is cheaper and it has simple and rough type of construction. So, if we see the starting torque equation of an induction motor, so let me say T star that is the starting torque will be equal to, this will be equal to K into E2 square into R2 upon R2 square plus X2 square. T starting is equal to K into E2 square into R2 upon R2 square plus X2 square where R2 is the rotor resistance, X2 is the rotor inductive reactance and E2 is the rotor induced EMF and your K is given by K is equal to 3 by 2 pi NS where NS is the synchronous speed and the units are rotation per second. So, this is the formula for your starting torque where we say the slip is equal to 1 at the standstill condition or at the starting movement. So, this is what we see in the starting torque that the slip is equal to 1. Now, here from the starting torque equation you can see that the starting torque is depending directly on the rotor resistance that is R2. Starting torque is depending directly on the rotor resistance R2 and in the squirrel case induction motors the rotor bars or the rotor we know they are short circuited at the ends and the rotor bars are mainly we are using copper or bronze or aluminum bars and those bars those copper aluminum or brass bars are having low resistance value. Now, this low resistance value implies that you are having a low starting torque. So, therefore, in order to have a high starting torque, we have to increase the value of this squirrel cage rotor resistance. So, once you increase the value of the ro rotor of this squirrel cage, then you are going to increase the starting torque and uh, the motive here is to why we are employing this deep bar double cage induction motor is because of this reason that squirrel cage induction motor do not have the high starting torque because the rotors are having low resistance value and this low resistance value will give us low starting torque. So therefore we are going for this deep bar double cage induction motor and the motive here is to provide a high value resistance in such a manner this high value resistance give us high starting torque and more efficiency and more efficiency. So, let us understand what is the reason for the poor starting torque in squirrel cage induction motor. Poor starting torque, the reason for the poor starting torque in induction motor. So, one thing we have understood is the squirrel cage induction motor rotors are short circuited with the help of end rings and uh, the rotor bars which we are employing the copper or aluminum or brass are having very low resistance value and uh, this resistance value cannot be varied like slip ring induction motor and uh, as this cannot be varied and this fixed resistance have low value and this corresponds to low starting torque or poor starting torque we are going for the deep bar double cage induction motor and at the time of starting so at the time of starting let us say the starting of the standstill condition you are having a slip s is equal to 1 and the induced emf in the rotor bars will be the same frequency if i write the induced the induced emf 
in the rotor bus or the induced voltage in the rotor bus will be of same frequency that of the supply frequency. So if I say F2 is the induced frequency then at the standstill condition when your slip is equal to 1 the slip supply frequency will be or the rotor frequency will be equal to the supply frequency. So now when this rotor induced EMF frequency is equal to the supply frequency we will be having the rotor inductive reactance that is given by 2 pi f into L. So as you are having the higher frequency so you will be having the higher rotor inductive reactance and despite the so again as you are having the induced EMF frequency equal to the supply frequency so your rotor currents your rotor currents will be also having the frequency which will be equal to the supply frequency and as the rotor bar of your squirrel cage induction motor are having lesser value or low value that means you will be having a high rotor current and despite having this high rotor currents you will be witnessing a poor starting torque because this rotor current will lag your induced EMF at a larger angle due to the large increase or you can say increase in the rotor inductive reactance. So you will be having a large angular uh, that is a phase angle difference between the rotor current and the induced EMF because of this increase rotor inductance rotor inductive reactance. So for this reason we will be having a poor starting torque as because of the supply frequency will be equal to the rotor frequency and at this at that starting condition or the standstill condition you will be having higher inductive reactance and these higher inductive reactants like you will write your current I is equal to V by Z. So this value is going to increase so there will be some phase of this value thereby this current will be lagging at a larger angle to the induced EMF your induced EMF let me write E is induced EMF so this large lag angle will cause the poor starting torque and therefore we are going for this double bar uh, that is deep bar double cage induction motors. So let us see the construction of deep bar double cage induction motors. So here it, ha it basically has two layers. So it, it basically has two layers. So one is the outer layer and one is the inner layer. So outer layer and inner layer. Now from the figure you can see this black portion is your outer bar and the green color represents your inner bar. So the outer layer or you can see the outer bar, the inner layer or the inner bar. So from here you can see the outer bars are having a smaller cross section area. They are having a smaller cross section area and we know that the resistance R can be given by rho L by A. That means the smaller the cross sectional area you will be having the higher resistance. So the outer bars are having smaller cross section area that means I am having higher resistance, higher resistance and I know my phi that is a flux linkage is equal to phi is equal to BA that means more the area I have more the flux linkage. So but here I am having a smaller cross section area that means my flux will be small and if your flux linkage to this outer bus is small that means I know phi can be given by Li. Now when phi is less your inductance will be less. So now here you can see the R by X higher R by X value because of the low inductive reactance we can see the high resistance to the inductive reactance ratio. Now coming to the inner layer, the inner layer which is the green portion here, you can see it, ha it is having a larger cross section area. Now the, the, from the same logic we will be having 
the smaller resistance and uh, more flux linkage because large cross section area and that means low that means that is more inductive reactance so here you will be having a smaller r by x ratio because you are having more inductive reactance as we have witnessed there is a more flux linkage because the more more cross section area is present and that means more inductive reactance so this is how uh, i can say this is my large resistance bar and this is my small resistance bar and you can see this is the top bar and this is the bottom bar so this is how basically you can see your deep bar double cage rotor in the induction motor now let us discuss the operational principle of this deep bar double cage induction motor but before proceeding to the operational principle of this deep bar double cage induction motor let us once see how the torque is going to vary as we vary the resistance of the rotor bar so let me say this is my let me say this is my torque and uh, for different values of for different values of rotor resistance let us plot how the torque speed characteristics appears so for the higher value of resistance so first let us go move from the lower value of resistance let us say r1 is a low value of resistance and r2 is a high value of resistance so for the lower value of resistance this will be my torque speed characteristics and uh, for the higher value of resistance so this will be my torque speed characteristics that means you can see this is the starting torque this is a TS, tst this is tst and uh, this is for r1 and this is for r2 that means more the resistance you are having more will be the starting torque and uh, less the resistance you are having less will be the starting torque so our desired desired torque speed character should be in this form so this is where we are getting at the low value of resistance and this is again the high value of resistance here so this is the desired torque speed characteristics for our deep bar double cage induction motor so if you discuss the operational principle so at this after uh, let me say at the standstill condition when the slip is equal to 1 so at the standstill condition when the slip is equal to 1 the induced voltage the induced emf and the rotor current will be having the frequency that is equal to the supply frequency and at this juncture speaking about the skin effect so we know the skin effect is the unequal distribution of current in a conductor as so if I say this is the my cross section of the conductor and this is the inner core as I move from the outer surface to the inner surface my uh, inductance increases and because of the flux linkage increases my inductance increases and as there is a more inductance at the inner surface my current choose tries to choose a path the outer surface to flow now similarly here also so the deep bars or the inner bars will be having the higher inductance that is higher inductance x is equal to 2 pi fl due to the skin effect caused by the alternating quantities that is the voltage and the current so due to the alternating quantity i will be having the skin effect and due to the skin effect your inner bars this inner bars or the deep bars will be having high inductive reactance and due to this the current tries to choose the outer path and now my outer path these outer bars which are short circuited bars and will be having the high resistance they will be having high resistance as we have discussed the outer layer are having the higher resistance and the lower inductive, inductive reactance that means the desired condition we are getting here the desired condition that means i need higher resistance and the smaller inductive reactance thereby i can achieve the high starting torque and that is a desired condition i am choosing this deep bar double deep bar double cage induction motor so higher resistance that means i will be having higher starting torque and i am having here lower inductive 
reactance at the outer bars. Now, as the D induction motor picks up the speed, the EM, the frequency of this induced EMF and the rotor currents will gradually decrease as the induction motor picks its speed. Now, now when the motor has reached sufficient speed, I do not then once that means as when the motor reaches sufficient speed, you are going to decrease your frequency of the rotor bars. So when you are going to when you are going to decrease the frequency of the rotor bars, that means you are going to reduce the inductive reactance and now the rotor currents will face the lesser inductive reactance and the lesser resistance as a whole and therefore at this juncture we do not need any more torque as the rotor will be the rotor arrives or achieves the full speed at running torque the rotor achieves its full, full speed at the running torque so if we see let me say here is I am having this is the conductor so at this juncture this will be the rotor flux moving here so again if I say here I am having the conductor, uh, rotor bars this is the outer rotor bar and this is the inner rotor bar so this will be having the more flux linkage initially that means you will be witnessing the more inductive reactance and the current chooses the outer bars for its path so therefore these outer bars will be having the higher resistance and lower inductive reactance will be achieving sufficient uh, st start that is the starting torque and as the induction motor picks speed the frequency of the induced emf and the rotor currents will gradually decrease and as it decrease you are going to witness the reduced inductive reactance and uh, again the rotor currents will face the radio, uh, less inductive reactance and less resistance and uh, at that juncture you do not need any more torque as the rotor will achieve the full speed at the running torque condition. So this is basically how you are going to achieve the starting torque in the deep bar double cage induction motor. So if I draw the equivalent circuit for this, so the equivalent circuit let me say this is my stator resistance, stator reactance and if I assume the stator resistance and reactance to be lesser value, this will be my magnetizing shunt resistance, this is resistance and this will be my reactance and again here I am having the outer bar resistance and uh, this will be outer bar reactance and this will be inner bar resistance and here I am having the inner bar reactance and this value will be Ri by K square into S and this is Xi by K square where K is the transformation ratio and similarly this is R0 R0 by K square into S and this is X0 by K square. So this is basically how the equivalent circuit looks for the induction motor that is a deep bar double cage induction motor and if you see how the inductive reactance is going to increase through a circuit so let me say these are my end rings these are my end rings for the bars and here I am having the resistance and this is my reactance and this is my resistance and this is my reactance and this is my resistance and this is my reactance. So you can see here the equal value of resistance, the operational principle I am explaining, the, you are having the equal value of resistance but you can see there is an increased value of the inductance. So here you are having a top bar and this is your bottom bar. So as the bottom bar is having the higher inductive reactance and the top bar is having lower inductive reactance and higher resistance so you will be witnessing the current to take this path that is the top bar path and this is the required and desired condition for us to achieve the high starting torque now let us once plot the torque slip characteristics for this deep bar double cage induction motor so let me say this is my torque and this is my slip this is 0 
and here I am adding the slip 1. So for the inner bar, so for the inner bar, I am having the low resistance that means your tall slip characteristics will appear like this, this blue portion. So this is how your talks, how the talk speed, the talk slip characteristics appear for the inner bar and for the outer bar I am having a more resistance that means this is how it looks. So this will be my outer bar. Now for the deep bar double cage induction motor the talk slip characteristics will be like this. So this is for the deep bar and this is for the inner and this is for the outer bar. So this is how the top slip characteristics appear for your deep bar double case induction motor. Now let us see once so what is the difference we are witnessing in this double case induction motor and a single case induction motor. So in a double case induction motor we have witnessed there will be the skin effect at the starting and this skin effect will cause the low starting current. So this will cause as a low starting current and we have seen high starting high starting torque. Now this enables me to connect my deep by double cage injection motor with DOL connection that is direct online. So I can directly connect my injection motor to the line as I am having low starting current because of the skin effect taking uh, taking place in this deep bar double cage initial motor and I am having the high starting current. So this is basically one difference and the other difference you can uh, see is so basically here in this deep bar double cage induction motor we are going to increase the effective resistance of the induction motor and this increase in the effective resistance of the induction motor will be causing the larger the larger rotor heating compared to your single case induction motor. So this is the other difference. Now the third difference we can notice so the outer layer I am having the higher resistance and this higher resistance of the outer layer will cause the resistance of the whole induction motor to be high and this high resistance of this deep bar double cage induction motor will cause the higher copper losses. I will be having the higher copper losses and this will result in the decreased efficiency of the double case induction motor and the fourth difference is the pull out torque of your double case induction motor is smaller than your single case induction motor and this pull out torque is the torque after which the motor comes to a star state which is nothing but the stop position. So the torque after which the motor comes to a stall state is your pull out torque and the pull out torque of your double case induction motor is smaller than the single case induction motor and the other main difference you can notice is the cost of this double case induction motor are 20 to 30 percent higher than single case induction motor of same rating. So for the same rating you will be having the higher cost that is 20 to 30 percent of higher cost of this double case induction motor compared to a single case induction motor. So in this video we have seen what is the reason for the poor starting torque and we have seen how that starting torque is going to vary as you vary the rotor bar resistance and we have seen what is the role of the outer bar and the inner bar and their varying cross sections and we have seen what is the, what is the role of skin effect here and uh, we have seen how the torque slip characteristics will vary for the outer bars and the inner bars and the, the complete both bars when and we have seen the complete when we have taken both the bars that is we are seeing the deep bar double case we have seen this blue color blue color portion which is a blue color plot is our deep bar double case injection motor and we have seen how the inductive reactance increases from the top bar to the bottom bar and uh, we have seen how the flux is going to link these outer bars and inner bars and uh, we have seen the equivalent circuit for your double case induction motor 
and we have seen the basic differences between the single cage injection motor and the double cage injection motor so this is all about your deep bar double cage injection motor i hope you understood well please subscribe to our channel thank you